Hey guys, this is Mike. I'm back with the second edition of uh, my Ask Me Anything Python series. Uh, we had a great response from everyone on the channel last week, so uh, we've got uh, another three or four questions to go through this week. So let's get started with the first question. So, Sorg Gupta uh, comments on our Python Django tutorial number five, the built-in admin interface, and says, in article section, it's showing article object instead of article name. So basically, when you go into the admin, you should see under your articles section, a list of titles of the articles that are in there. And the way that you actually implement that is you need to add in a line, um, which basically says def underscore underscore unicode underscore underscore, and then create a function from that which just returns the article title. Now, the reason for that is that when, uh, or in previous versions of Django, previous to Django 1.9 that is, um, it used to be the case that to get the title to appear, um, Django's internal systems would look at that Unicode method on any model. And then whatever that model returned would be what it would put in the lines that you'd see in the admin interface. So um, to implement that and then to return the title actually tells Django what do you want to see. However, um, recently um, we basically had a change in that and now in Django 1.9 we now use underscore underscore str underscore underscore to do that. So if you if you work in cross projects like I was um, just last month actually um, I was teaching a class in Dublin and we had one week we were working on Django 1.8.7 and then within uh, a week later um, we started new projects and we, we were doing the whole pip install Django section and uh, lo and behold we were getting Django 1.9 now that caused problems for us because the 1.8.7 version um, had dependencies on the way that that version worked. So as soon as we installed 1.9, everything went bang and went crazy. So if you're moving from 1.8, uh, sorry, less than 1.9, be careful because things have changed and you may have to kind of relearn a few things um, let me know if you want me to do an update on that and I'll, I'll see if I can organise a video that will help you to see what the changes are in, uh, in previous versions prior to 1.9. So next up we've got um, Andre Pali um, who basically says, um, could you explain how to integrate Django app with LDAP? I am a newbie in web development and official documentation isn't fair, isn't clear enough. Shock horror. Um, and then he lists the, the how to um, do auth remote user and the, the fact that he's put the different submission session middlewares and all that sort of stuff into Django um, but says what's next. To be honest um, I think that's possibly a little bit more complicated than you need to do. Um, if you've done the whole pip install section, um, which you should have covered when you did the the initial uh, lesson one, you, tutorial one of how to actually install um, Django and do the whole pip thing with the virtual environments, then you will know how to install different modules. And um, I'm going to basically give you a pointer towards um, a module that will allow you to then um, just pip install that and it will vastly simplify things. Okay, so basically what you want to do is you want to go to Google or something like that or even GitHub and you want to Google or GitHub for uh, Django Python LDAP and that will give you a proper Django module that you can pip install and what it will allow you to do is it will allow you to install the module and then inside your settings.py you can include the various different things that need to allow you to connect to LDAP and cause it to be an alternative form of uh, authentication. Now, it will also add in um, a bit of 
of an authentication backend in addition to your normal uh, your normal models authentication you know the, the username and password combination it'll it'll add that in but it'll also add in the LDAP version too so you'll have two forms of uh, identification in there um, so if you basically install that follow the quick instructions that are on the on the github page then I'm sure you'll have more success than you would following that other example um, Sometimes it's just easier to go to GitHub and look for something like that. And it's easier to just basically say Django and then the subject word. And you'll find there are loads of modules on there for that. So hope that helps. Okay, so now we have um, Raj Verma um, who commented on the Python Django tutorial number 14. Uh, file uploading and updating database schema. And it says uh, no such column registration under underscore registration dot thumbnail. Um, extrapolating from that, I guess you probably don't speak my language very well, and that's there's much information as you could probably put in there. So fair enough. Um, but I think what you're saying is that you've you've done the whole uh, start server run server thing, and you've attempted to. Um, load a page and you've got this no no such column registration thumbnail um, if you're running the current version of Django um, you'll have to run migrations if you don't run the migrations it won't find those columns in your database and if it doesn't find them that's where you get the errors so basically um, if you're struggling you can head over to my website and I'm going to stick the, the whole uh, link down below thing in the description for a lot of these packages that I've already mentioned actually. Um, so if you want to head over to my Mike's Django Tutorials.co.uk website on the section that says uh, what's available there's a little link to the free source code download for the whole series. So all 25 lessons, the codes are in there, you can go in there and check that out. Um, you should just generally be able to install it in its own virtual env. Its own virtual env. And if you do that, then you can actually run the code as well. So if you're getting stuck, there's the code. Go and compare your code with mine. Um, unfortunately, I can't debug your code. And if you emailed it to us, I may or may not have the time to be able to do it because when I'm not doing this channel, I'm running a business. So finally, we've got uh, a guy called Unknown Mask, very mysterious, um, saying, is there an alternative to PyHook? Um, can't say that I've done a lot of development with Windows based stuff, but basically PyHook allows you to hook into various events like mouse events or keyboard events and that sort of stuff uh, on the Windows platform, from what I gather. Um, and I can see that it's possibly it's useful in, in doing applications where you want to log what keystrokes people are making. Um, there are a couple of alternatives. Um, if you're using PyGTK, then that application will let you uh, record what key presses were happening, but only within the realms of the application that you're running. Um, the other alternative is you might even consider using something called PyGame. And Pygame is a games development library, but it also has a nice little section that will allow you to record keystrokes as they happen, and also mouse position and that sort of thing. So those are a couple of alternatives. However, if you want Pyhook, and if I remember rightly, the description the description of the problem that unknown mask was having was that basically it couldn't get past the whole pip install situation. On Windows, it's a bit tricky. Um, it isn't necessarily impossible, but it's it's not as simple as some other platforms that I might uh, recommend you use instead. But if you must work in Windows, there is an alternative to, to having to compile code, um, which is particularly what you have to do with PyHook. What you can do is you can uh, go to this page, which I'm going to give you the link for, and on there 
there's a, a list of pre-compiled binaries for Windows for the 32-bit and 64-bit versions and you can download that. However, it will install your uh, applications at a system level. So if you're running a virtual env, you can't have a specific version for that virtual env. You'll have to rely on the system level version, um, which is or isn't what you want to do. Um, if you're running a, an application that's been used by all users, then fair enough. If you want to run more than one application or more than one version of that, which uses different models, you might have problems. But if you follow that link, um, there's a couple listed in there. I've put the tick marks next to it just so you can see which ones I would say were the, probably the best ones to get because they're the most current versions um, and theoretically, theoretically have less bugs. That's the end of this week's roundup of questions. Um, I hope that was educational for you and if you learned something then click the like button. If you want to hear more or see more in the series we will update you if you click the subscribe button. So thanks for watching.